I'd like to call to order the Town of McCandless uh, Council's regular business meeting, September 24th, 2018. The invocation and Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Council Member Powers. <laughs> to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well, to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote the common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and the future, and the rights and needs of individuals and community. As trusted servants, we seek blessing on our deliberations and our efforts here today. May we act wisely and well. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of Council's regular business meeting from August? So moved. Second. There has been a motion and a second to approve the minutes. For any questions, comments, by council? Any additions or corrections that need to be made? All right, we will go to a vote. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes as they are for the council's regular business meeting on September 27, 2018, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, announcements. Um, we have John Griffith, stand up and say hi, from Troop 171, who is working on his communication merit badge. Is that right? Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, another announcement that we have, I'm very happy to announce that the town has received the national fitness, um, from the national fitness campaign the fitness grant for $30,000 uh, toward building a fitness court in 2019. We're working on the next phases of that to um, move that move that program along. That's right. We have our Make Autumn Fast, um, which was, of course, our redo from our um, community day that we'll be having our fireworks um, at, and that is October, I have to look 20th. My, October 20th. So at from 1 to 7, 7 to 7.15 when the fireworks will be. So please, everyone, mark those on your calendars. Redo all those parties that got washed out. Um, number five, I would like to call to order the public hearing on the ordinance now tentatively identified as ordinance number 1479, an ordinance requested by Barrel Chevrolet Incorporated to amend the Town of McCandless zoning ordinance to change the zoning district of certain property located on Perry Highway and Little Meadow Road at 2 Little Meadow Road, 3 Little Meadow Road, and including a 40-fit private right-of-way in the Town of McCandless from R2, which is 1 to 2 Family Residential District, to C3 Highway Commercial District, and amending the zoning map of the town accordingly. This public hearing will be reviewed at Town Council Zoning Committee meeting on October 8th, 2018, and voted on at Council's regular business meeting on October 22nd, um, 2018. Um, our land use administrator, Bruce Betty, is going to do a little presentation now about that. A couple administrative things off the bat, uh, just to get them out of the way. The property was properly posted in accordance with uh, Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code and it was advertised in accordance with the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code. This is a redo of a public hearing we had uh, about two months ago, I believe it was about two months ago we had a public hearing. And after that public hearing, I, I met with some of the neighbors who had some concerns about this development. And their concerns were primarily stormwater related. And what we did, uh, we did two things since then which required us to have a new public hearing. It, it uh, was determined by our town attorney that this was a substantial change and we had to rewrite the ordinance and the rewrite of the ordinance changed the dimensions of the, of the change of zoning request. So 
the neighbors had also requested uh, some information about the stormwater, and I got with the engineer and and with the barrel Chevrolet. They respected the neighbor's request to do a complete stormwater study. That's a little bit out of the ordinary for what we normally do. That's usually held off until we do our, our site plan. But in this case, because it was so significant and, and it had the potential to have a significant impact on our entire stormwater system, we wanted to be certain that it was going to be feasible. That study was completed and reviewed in concept by our town stormwater engineer and found that it is a feasible study. It's not going to be overly expensive. It's stuff that they were going to have to do as part of their site plan anyways. So that part was done and accomplished. And so that takes care of the one change. This is the site plan. I'll start from the beginning. The, the zoning change is behind Barrel Chevrolet. This is Perry Highway. This is Barry, uh, Barrel Chevrolet. And uh, this is, I believe, Barrel Honda for used cars. And the areas are, there are two houses back here. Both of those houses are going to propose to be demolished. Uh, this was a Smith residence who was, for history's sake, it was uh, Mrs. Barrel's sister who lived here. And uh, she has since moved away. And this was a, an employee of Barrel lived here. Lee Barrel lives in this house. Uh, this property is not going to be rezoned. So the proposal is to rezone this property and this property and the right of way, which goes down through here. Uh, this is the stormwater facility, uh, which is going to be completely redone. The neighbors have requested that it be completely redone. Right now it is holding uh, a lot of mosquitoes. It's green. It's totally overgrown. And there is an outlet structure here. So Beryl is going to propose uh, to redo this. And the other part to this change is this was originally the entire site was going to be rezoned. Uh, let me pull this down. Reach. You can reach. Can I have to handle that? The more he pulls on it, the more likely it's going to come unplugged. Or foot area that was originally proposed to be rezoned uh, right through here and the rezoning stops here so the area to be rezoned is I'm sorry the hundred foot area is yeah it is right there so the hundred foot area here's the line the proposed rezoning change line is right here so the area to be rezoned is this area and out through here the neighbors liked that proposal better than the original proposal, which was to have this as an easement. And uh, what that does is, with this being residential, if there ever is a building here and there aren't any proposals to build a building here, the setback line is now from here, which is 100 foot from this property line. The parking lot itself could go within 20 feet of this, depending on the buffer zone. 20 feet would be uh, the closest that it could go here. I think because of grading, it won't go here. This is the proposed plan for the parking area. And, uh, and right now, that's all they're planning to do. Uh, we also have some agreements uh, on this that there, it isn't, is not going to be lit and that there aren't going to be loudspeakers back there. And uh, we have uh, also talked to the, already they are not permitted to unload cars at, in the middle of the night, uh, which sometimes leads to another problem. The trucks aren't allowed to get back there, so they park up on uh, Route 19, or right now we're uh, at the corner of Route 19 and, and Reichold Road. So uh, if another proposal for another property goes through, that will not happen. And in fact, I spoke with Keith Knock about that, and Keith indicated that that, that was going to stop. And I believe that you've notified everybody to stop that. And for the record, we have with us Christina, Christina Malkin, who is the uh, attorney rec re uh, representing 
Barrel Chevrolet Inc., Dan Grachin, the engineer for Barrel Chevrolet Inc., and Keith Nock, who is, what's your title, Keith? Yeah, what is your title right now? Keith does everything for Barrel yeah, Chevrolet, yeah. except sell cars. If I ever have any problems with Beryl, and there aren't many, Keith makes sure they get taken care of. So that's about it. Uh, like I said, this is a redo. Are there any questions from council members? What is that setback now from the parking lot? It would be is it in the, in right now for construction. Mm -hmm. For construction of a building, it would be 100 feet. Okay. For the parking lot, the parking lot cannot go outside the buffer zone. The minimum buffer zone is 20 feet. And all of those lines that are going um, horizontal, are those? Elevation lines. These, the where it's shaded? No, where it's She's not shaded. about the contour Between lines. Between the pond right there. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, lines. yes, those Thanks. are all contour lines. And those areas are, are in this plan, are not proposed to be graded. When I was out there, it's going to be tough to grade just so they're probably going to have to build a wall or something. I'm not the engineer, but you know, reviewing it, it looked like it would be too expensive. This floor is eroded. It looked like it would be too expensive uh, to grade this out and expand the parking lot to get more closer than it is right now. There's also a sanitary sewer line underneath there, and we have limitations on what we can do with regard to placement of those lines. And that's what I wanted to know, how much further that could possibly be built out, the parking By lot. By law, it could go within 20 feet of this, of the, the zoning line. Practically speaking, it would be expensive for them to do that. And it's, this is probably the optimum, this is probably the optimum uh, location of the parking lot, I would think. Is that correct, Dan? Yes. Any other questions for council? Madam President, I'd yes. just like to say I want to thank Burl for uh, working uh, with the residents there and making these concessions to, uh, to, uh, to make this a good project for everyone. There are no other comments or questions from council or any comments from the audience about this, about the barrel property. Okay. All right, then the, the is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Okay. Uh, second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is closed. Reports from committees, Finance and Personnel Committee. Madam Chairman, I move to, re I move to ratify checklisting number nine, dated August 9th, 2018, through September 5th, 2018, totaling $502,476.55 as submitted to each member of council and posted on the bulletin board and town website. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second to accept the checklist. Are there any questions or comments from council about checks during this period? Hearing none, are there any um, comments from the audience concerning the ratification of checklistings? Number nine. Okay. There's been a motion and a second, and time for questions. All those in favor of ratifying checklist number nine, dated August 9th, 2018, through September 5th, 2018, uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chairman, I move to. No, there's no motion. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. There is a motion. It's an announcement. It's an announcement. Oh, okay. We have an announcement that the town has received its minimum mun municipal obligation for its police and phased out non-uniform defined contribution pension plan. Do you want to say anything or are we good? Just a brief comment. This is an annual requirement, of course, for our pension funding. Uh, the state uh, provides us with uh, aid, as it's called, state aid for, uh, from uh, the pension system and the st state uh, draws revenues from uh, taxes that are uh, levied on uh, foreign fire casualty insurance companies, insurance companies that are not headquartered in Pennsylvania.
and this tax is divided up in, in many ways, and one of them is to help fund the pension plan, and this is simply uh, a requirement by the State Auditor General's office that, that we have this announcement made that we have received these funds, and we have received the MMO for next year. Zoning Committee. I move to accept the letter of resignation received from Kenneth Cuccinelli as a member of the Zoning Hearing Board, effective August 31st, 2018. Uh, Ken was a, a member for several years, and he's, the reason he's quitting is because they have moved, he's moved us out of state, and therefore he has to resign. I second the motion. There has been a motion and a second. Are there any um, comments concerning his resignation? Any comments from citizens? Hearing none, the motion has been made and seconded to accept the letter of resignation from Kenneth uh, Cuccinelli as a member of the Zoning Hearing Board. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there any unfinished business? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to um, new business. We are going to have a short presentation from Public Partners, which is an executive search uh, firm that um, we are looking into to help us uh, locate a suitable town manager replacement. Thank you for your presentation on such short notice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation and con for considering Public Partners. Public Partners was founded in 2009. Three municipal managers founded the company, myself, Greg Smith, who has passed, and Jody Noble, both former Moon Township officials. Jody uh, is now the uh, manager in Chartiers Township. Full disclosure, we are owned by Babs Callen Law Firm. We are, all our consultants are independent consultants. We, are, we have no employees. Babs Callan does some of our uh, legal work as far as contracts. They also uh, do our billing to our clients. We do, uh, everything we do is municipal work, uh, municipal manager searches, interim managers. We have a police consultant that handles our police chief searches and police work. Um, we're doing a project right now in the city of Washington for an early intervention uh, project. Uh, we do some zoning consulting, and um, that's pretty much our scope of services. Um, although we're affiliated with Babs Callen, we have very little contact, so don't worry. The solicitors don't have to worry about me by trying to take any any work from the and solicitors. I, and I'm so sorry. You haven't told us who you are. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Gerald Patterson. I'm the managing consultant. I go by Jerry. Okay. Um, I'm a former manager in Butler Township and Wilkins Township. I retired in 2008 and uh, doing most of this work is part-time. Thank you. Uh, council has received the um, Exhibit A, which is the process for the manager search, as well as um, an overview of what is entailed and what Public Partners does um, for their search. So um, this is the first time that we have um, met to um, have any questions um, answered. Okay. So um, uh, we'd like to take any questions or comments from council i'd like to know where do you advertise what do you use for advertising it, it depends on the nature of the search if, if we're doing local we use the uh, local government academy website uh, pennsylvania league of cities and we have another a free advertisement um, western pennsylvania municipal managers have a email service that we send out the advertisement to members of the Western Pennsylvania managers and their contacts. A lot of uh, people that do work for municipalities 
know of openings and word of mouth, and that's where we get our most um, resumes from. You don't do any newspaper advertising? We, we try and steer away because of the cost. If it's going to be a, a national search, we would consider doing an ICMA uh, advertisement, but because of the cost of the local newspapers, uh, you're not going to get many good responses from people in the municipal management field in the local newspapers. Thank you. Any other questions? So I have a question. Under um, Section 1, under B, it says you would contact two governmental related organizations to place the advertisements. Were yeah. they the ones you just Yeah, they were the Local Government okay. Academy of Pennsylvania League of Cities. Typically, after we, we have the advertisements, we usually give them about a month before the resumes can come in and we can start looking at potential uh, interviews. Okay. And I know you said that the background checks and everything would go through a third party. Yes. Could we use our, I don't understand why, could we use Chief DeSanti to do that since he does that for all of our that's other certainly people? That's certainly your call. It'd save us money too. Okay. What's the usual cost of that? It, it depends on how much trouble they, they have contacting former employee or employers, but it would be three to five hundred dollars. And that's doing all the criminal checks and checking references and that's for everyone? That's per per individual. Per, per person. Yeah, we, we recommend you, you don't do the those background checks till you get down to a final one or two candidates. Um, your regular reports that you speak of in number five, what, what does that mean? Are those weekly? What is, what is we, that? We, can, we typically do them weekly. We can do them as often as you would like. But we receive resumes from our office once a week. And we would, if you so desire, we would send you uh, an email with the resumes in it so everybody can take a look at them. And then we, would, we put them on a spreadsheet to identify the candidates, their education, their work history, their salary, references. It's just kind of a quick look to see if you're maybe interested in those people. I also noticed that it said the candidates that should be interviewed. Does that mean the candidates that are qualified to be interviewed? We get a lot of resumes for people that don't meet the requirements, but we still put them on the spreadsheet and we still send the resumes to you but we would recommend who to interview and who not, but it's, it's your call in the end. But we'll see everyone. Who You'll see them all, yes. Any Ma other questions? Madam President, yes. uh, yeah. can, you, can you tell me the length of time that this type of a search generally requires? It depends on the quality of the resumes and the applicants. It depends on how many and how thorough you want to do interviews. Uh, we've had them go on for four or five months. We've had them happen in two or three months if it's a, you know a pretty thorough, fast service. Thank you. Just as a, a follow-up, we had a municipality that didn't, the, uh, the council or the elected officials weren't happy with some of the resumes and we had to go out and hit the streets and contact some of our knowledgeable friends and we, we finally got some good contacts and got some good people. Any more questions? Comments from? Um, do we need any? Okay, you're right. All right. Are we do, are we interested in making a motion then? Madam President, um, go ahead. I move to approve an agreement with Public Partners to provide executive search services in finding a replacement for retiring town manager 
subject to uh, final editing by our solicitor. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. I'll ask again if there are any questions <coughs> from council. Okay. Any comments from citizens? Okay. All right, hearing none, there has been a motion and a second to approve an agreement with um, public partners um, with the approval of a pending any changes um, provided by our solicitor. Um, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time, um, we, the, um, the mic is open for um, public comment. Are there any citizens that have comments that they would like to make? Going once. Going twice. Okay. Um. You ready? Yeah. Madam President, I move to enter into executive session to discuss personnel matters. There has been a motion. Is there a second? Second. A motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Um, there will be no more meeting after executive session, so you don't have to wait around. We'll just adjourn from there. How's an evening? Steelers. Steelers. Yeah, that was the Steelers.